Okay, we're good to go. Uh, hello to anyone listening. Welcome to another episode of the Bughead Podcast. Today I have the wonderful guest, Paper Lady. Uh, why don't you guys all introduce yourselves and tell me what you do in the band? Hi, my name's Alex. I, I play the drums. Uh, my name's Rowan. I play guitar. My name's Allie. I play guitar and I sing. My name's Will. I play bass and sing. I'm Kenzo. I play keys and guitar, and I sing. So, you guys are Boston-based currently, right? Yes, yes we are. All right. Uh, are you all from Boston, or at least the Boston, Massachusetts, New England area? No, no. none of us are from. <laughs> no, none of us. None of you are from here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was gonna ask, um, how did you get involved with the the Boston music scene? We all, we went to school uh, at Berkeley and all just like met there, started playing together. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, you also, Ali and Will lived in like a house show venue for a little bit as well. Yeah, uh, in Austin. Yeah, so that had a lot to do, I think, with us like becoming involved with the scene was just like hanging out there and uh meeting people um were you were you okay so you all went to went to berkeley you all came from met there and that's how the band got started were you involved in your local music scene back home before you came out to boston that's that's wow i was not i feel like i had i don't know or i kind of was but i was more like i was playing covers and stuff at like hotel rooftops for like four hours at a time to like make money but there wasn't like too much of the music scene i'm from florida um and i yeah like sarasota florida there's like a bit of a scene but not really in the way that like there is for boston um i feel like coming to boston and like getting involved in the scene here inspired me a lot to be a part of it um just like inspired me a lot musically i feel like yeah i am who i am musically because of the boston music scene mm. honestly yeah i would say same i we alex and i played in a band in la and we lived in la and went to high school together and played in a band but boston definitely has been more involved and awesome of the scene in general yeah, I was like a, a slight, I guess, spectator when I was in high school. I'm from Long Island, um, and I was always driving out to see bands. Like, I was a really big fan of, like, Max Seal and Table Talk, um, and my my buddy Jerry's band, uh, Standstill, and he was kind of really involved with the scene, would sometimes, like, bring me around. Um, I did a few, like house shows in my mom's living room and I would like um clear out all the furniture in the living room like every night we did it and then like take pictures and put it back exactly the way it was like <laughs> so, uh and yeah just have like shows like that um but definitely became more involved upon moving to Boston so you all met and the band came to together going to Berkeley, but how, what was the, how did you guys start writing songs together? How did like, do you all help write the songs or are there specific members that are more involved with the songwriting? I want to hear about how you guys started actually creating the songs together. Originally, um, Paper Lady was a project between me and um, this other person, like my first year at Berkeley. And it was just like a dorm room project gotcha. that I was like, songwriting for and then it was like just me and Rowan was helping me like record demos and stuff for it um and then like more recently like within the last couple of years like when this lineup kind of like fell into place we all started writing together um or like I would bring a song 
that I had written on like guitar and like I had the like vocal melody for and everything and then everybody else would like write their own part. Um, more recently, it's been a lot more collaborative. We've been working on an album and it's been kind of like, if you have an idea, like bring it. Um, everybody's kind of been like rotating on like what instruments they play for different songs as well more recently. Um, but it is, I mean, it's always been pretty collaborative with this group. I feel like we've all kind of just like played off of each other for a while, but it's getting even like more collaborative with like just preparing this new release and everything. Yeah, there's been even like a few songs on the upcoming album where it would like the inception of them is like when the five of us are playing together, which is something that I've personally never had before, which is really cool that we like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be like, like trying to, we'll be like practicing, like trying to finish a song that we like started writing all together. And then we're like, ah, oh, like I don't like any of that. And then we just like kind of start fucking around and then it's like a whole new song gets written. <laughs> yeah. It's like happened mm -hmm. a few times with this album. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's become increasingly collaborative as it goes on. When did this uh, lineup of the band come together? How long have you guys been playing as this iteration of Paper Lady? Like, Almost three years. Coming up on three years. Yeah, yeah it, it was like September. Yeah, September of 21, 2021. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bit like the summer before um, where Ali and I would play with our friends and uh, we they would like switch off between like uh, drums and bass over to like cello and violin. Um, and then they ended up like moving to New York. And I was like, oh, what are we gonna do? But Ali was like, I've already got it like all set up. <laughs> like, yeah. um, well, the three of them like weren't in town yet. Yeah. It was like near the tail end of like the pandemic. So yeah, I mean, Will had been in Paper Lady um before like covid hit we played like one show that was actually at the house show venue that will and i ended up living in but we played one show there and then it was like pandemic everybody has to go home because we were all like in school um i remember you had asked me to to play yeah. keys like i was like right i don't even before. know what i want you to do i just want you to be in it yeah. like, <laughs> and then the pandemic hit so nothing came of that and i like went home yeah but as soon as i came back and um i joined yeah Alex, I think his first gig was like subbing on it, and then it was yeah. kind of like immediately like, so do you want to do this forever? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So COVID ends. This version of the the band comes together. What are some of the the other artists that you're playing with regularly? Some of the venues that you guys were playing in. Uh once this lineup kind of came together we were playing with um our, our really good friends in trophy wife a lot yeah they're um, a band that i feel like mckenzie um mckenzie's like the front person of trophy wife mm -hmm. but we've been friends for a while we also met at school um and we talked about how like the first paper lady show and the first trophy wife show were like I think it was the same show yeah. yeah it was the same show um and we've had like sort of similar like band trajectory as well it feels like um yeah like people have gotten us mixed up before <laughs> which is really funny yeah but yeah we really love them yeah we play with them a lot when um, we started out we were playing with them like a, a shit ton. like all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. we did our it was like the first time we played out of state it was on a little tour with them yeah and uh, it started like um uh and mostly in basements like the first year was like in basements and yeah like we had one show at bright music hall and that was like our that was actually our first show as the five of us was at bright music hall um yeah and um but for the most part we were like doing like two to three gigs like every weekend it felt like yeah um, i was just like trying to book us on like as much stuff as possible yeah. it's just like just said, nobody like, knows yes who we to are. everything like, you just gotta say yes to everything we're like playing at o'brien's to like nobody and, like... Yeah. and midway cafe <laughs> yeah, midway and then, and then yeah. like playing o'brien's the next week to nobody again yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but then it's like everybody's like seeing like oh yeah like paper lady i feel like i've seen that like everywhere recently like who is that and then people start showing up because they're like oh this name is everywhere and then you don't have to like take as much stuff or like say yes to every single thing and like you know. yeah do you guys play outside of mass at all how much how much have you guys yeah. traveled around to play we've done well, um yeah we're touring this month and this will be like our fifth tour yeah um, we this will be the first tour that we go down south because we're gonna go like play some shows in florida do like a run with um palomino blonde who's from miami um but other than that like the other five or the other four tours that we did were like mainly northeast and then like venturing into canada the the yeah yeah a lot of like kind of the surrounding states like yeah. tours and stuff where'd you play in canada oh sorry we played, uh, in montreal and toronto yeah canada how are those so shows awesome. oh sorry so I keep... no it's okay <laughs> really? the yeah. music scene's really cool up there like yeah, every so, band so. that we've played with has been really amazing yeah so, in toronto we played this show at like a vintage clothing warehouse that they reconfigured at night to like, be a venue which was really awesome yeah so so we did like a little run uh with this band called burrs that is from are they from montreal toronto. Or toronto yeah they're from toronto but they're really awesome um there's also like sun forger mm. and knitting knitting <laughs> yeah great yeah great scene yeah it's a really awesome scene in canada where are Sorry, some but... uh, where are some of your other place like favorite places outside of Massachusetts to perform? Uh, every Philly. time, yeah, we play in Philly. It's really <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and like Vermont. New York as well. Yeah, yeah, New York for sure. Yeah. Philly's just Philly. got Philly. There's so many bands that we love who live out there. Yeah, there's so yeah. many of our like favorite bands. Shout some like out. Yeah. Oh, well, her new knife. First of all, those the are the bands, homies. Yeah. But they're they're a really awesome band. Yeah. yeah, we did a run with them a little while ago. They're also like originally from Florida, so we knew I knew them like through mutual friends in Florida. Like we hadn't met before, but then we were like hitting each other up because they just liked our music and we liked their music. And, yeah. Um. Them, they're getting a body of water, yeah. full body two. Uh. Well, at. That was like originally a Philly band, but now they're like somewhere else, I think. I think they're like Baltimore or something. Yeah, they were really awesome. There's a country western. Oh, yeah, country Country western. Western. A country western. Paris from a country western has another project. um, Solvent OS. OS. Yeah, Yeah. Solvent OS. That's like really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you just don't miss when you go to Philly, like the bands you're playing with are. Yeah. I got to get more tapped into the Philly scene. I, uh, I don't know that much about it. If you I'll check, have to check out, out some the, of the bands. Yeah, the label Julia's War. Julia's yeah, War. Like, yeah. By like the country or not country western. Uh, they're getting a body of water. Like people. Yeah. It's like a lot of my and probably all of our favorite bands are on there. Yeah. I'll give that a look. Um. Do you guys have any? funny exciting or interesting store like tour stories from any of your four tours so far huh yeah i'm trying to think of like well for a while we were touring in a prius <laughs> oh my god, oh, yeah. god. <laughs> we always we always had to have but like we did those tours like one was with trophy wife and and one was with our friends um digital in awareness. digital awareness yeah. and like so we always had like someone with an extra car and we we're like can we keep some of our gear in your car because like it probably wouldn't have worked at all no um, we were just sitting with all our instruments yeah stuff. i was about to say out. like you can fit all five of you and the gear in a prius that doesn't <laughs> you weren't driving you it was just, like cramped up it was filled to the brim everyone like we'd have to take breaks because everyone's like <laughs> legs can't would move. go numb in the back <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um yeah that was a crazy one this like one time that I always um, cherish, which was fun. Like the first time we went to Philly, I think um, we couldn't find, we didn't have anywhere to stay. And so we got like a cheap motel and we like 
pushed the beds together and decided oh, yeah. to have like a slumber like party. Two beds, but it was like either three of us would have had to be in like, like one bed, or we could just like shove the two like double beds together and like all have like the same amount of space. So you're like, we'll just push them together. So we watched like, them push them like... together. We're like watching TV. Yeah, like... it was like cable TV infomercials and stuff, and <laughs> we got some Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, yeah, that was really fun <laughs> Let's see. So you guys have an album coming out, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. How is this album differing from your previous EPs and other releases? Um, I think we like like we said before, it's like our most like collaborative thing that we've done. So, um, th- there's like a lot more. I think that there's like a like really cool range on this record. I feel like it's a bit of a darker sound as well. Yeah, it's our first like it's our first full length yeah. release. So I feel like well yeah, like Rowan said, it's our most collaborative like body of work to date and it's also like our largest. So I feel like it does it just has a really wide range, I feel like. Um we kind of got to like play around and like go into all of the little areas that we like musically mm-hmm. um as opposed to being like oh it's like a like a four song thing and like everything has to be like i feel like when you make something that's shorter everything has to be very like cohesive mm-hmm. but when you make an album you just like have this space to kind of like go and like explore this thing and then kind of like tie that track like together with like this other thing that's totally different with like the stuff that's in between um so we've just like gotten to really like play around i feel like in a way that we haven't gotten to before and there hasn't been much like like i don't know i'm trying to think of a word but there hasn't been much um like oh no like that doesn't like fit this like for this it's just kind of like if we have something and it feels good we're like running with it even if it's like vastly different from like a lot of other things like on the album so i think that it's just going to give like a very wide lens as to like what paper lady is at this point in time. Um, so it's exciting in that way. What's the actual recording process for it? Like, are you guys in a studio or are you working in a home studio? We, uh, um, we're doing a mix of things. We um, like have, uh, a bit of like a semblance of a home studio upstairs which is really just like my computer and like a uh, interface and a couple microphones but mostly we've been doing it at the record co which is an awesome like non-for-profit uh studio in boston um and we'll go like once a week to record stuff that we have um that do like drums or have like a guitar day or something like that. Um, but it's been a mix, like any, a lot of things, like as we get further and further into the process, we'll, we'll like do some stuff here. Um, but yeah, we've been doing it all ourselves and we're mixing it ourselves as well. So it's been a really, really fun process too. I think uh, uh, when you have that type of time, I feel like we're able to kind of like mess around and like um, explore and learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting process. I feel like I I haven't really, you're going into the studio weekly. Yeah. Are you recording it all yourself or do you have anybody helping you with that? It's just all us. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's all us. Yeah. I work, I work at that studio, so. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> lucky enough, you know, to get some, get some time there once a week. Yeah. Um, so we just get the space and we can kind of do whatever we want with it. What's up guys? Cutting in with a little phone voice memo to let you all know that we are screening Bughead TV Volume 2 at Ralph's Rock Diner in Worcester on July 27th as a part of Void Fest Black Metal Flea Market. Show starts at 4, intermissions at 8, pull up, have a few drinks, have some fun, watch some great bands, and uh, hope to see you there. Bye. Chicken. Is it chicken?
Oh, oh. my cat is named Chicken. <laughs> we just uh, saw amps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I want to know if was there a specific artist or release that made you want to start making music or start playing an instrument? I feel, when I when I was um like a freshman in college, I. Like when I got to school, I was like, I'm a singer. Like I don't, I didn't know how to play any instruments. Um, and honestly, I feel like my music taste was kind of shit. Like I don't really think that there was much like good music that I liked until I got to college and like actually started like hunting for stuff and like utilizing the internet and like Spotify um, in like a real way. But I found like Dive, uh, Of Love and like broadcast and the sundays all around the same time and i was like i gotta learn how to play guitar like i love the sundays so, so much play guitar. <laughs> yeah. i remember like late high school i was really into hiatus coyote like that album choose your weapon i mean all of high school but some some for some reason like later in high school it really inspired me to to start producing and making music like what artist inspired you to start uh, playing music? I really, um, when I, I, I grew up on the Beatles, and I think that was like the, like Paul McCartney was my first like role model ever. But then I remember like in high school, I started listening to Tim and Paula and found out like, I never thought about the fact that you could record music at home. And then it's like, whoa, like this is, like amazing like this is so crazy because i just up until that point i think i was like assumed that you had to have a ton of money to even record music um so um, i got really into that and then i got into like artists like jeff rosenstock and his project on the music industry which is just like the most like anybody can record this type of music and it can be good like me from so yeah those two inspired me at the time hell yeah I was really inspired by mac to marco in high school mm. to start making music at least it's like you know grew up listening to classic rock a whole bunch but mac to marco felt like a turning point for me. <laughs> yeah Um. Yeah, who did inspire you? Actually, I don't even know that. I don't know. I mean, there is this one like, there's this duo like back in high school that I used to listen to a bunch called Yusef Kamal. Oh yeah. And that really inspired me to just like play drums like at a like a higher level per se. But like that just really inspired me to like dive into that like jazz fusion world. So that was really. Cool. How did you learn how to play drums? How did I, oh, oh, how did, I learned how to play drums through Lego Rock Band. Believe oh. it. Let's go. I've heard a couple yeah. people say that. I've heard a couple people say they've learned how to play drums through Rock Band because that's the only yeah. instrument in any of those like Guitar Hero adjacent games where yeah. playing the fake instrument is actually kind of like playing yeah. the real one. It's it's very similar. Yeah, it's very similar. <laughs> oh, so she can Lego Rock Band. You should get that game again. <laughs> I had Lego Rock Band. I remember that one. Yes. Yeah, Xbox 360. Yes. <laughs> I had Beatles Rock Band. I remember yeah. like, we'd have yes. parties. My parents would have parties and they'd be like a bunch of 50 and 60 year olds. Like we'd be playing Beatles Rock Band and they'd be sit- standing around like singing like the Beatles song. <laughs> <laughs> I had Green Day Rock Band. And that mm. rocked. Oh, that was so good. Uh, Aerosmith. Oh, oh that was a big one. <laughs> there was an Aerosmith one? I didn't know about the Aerosmith one. Yeah, that was a Guitar Hero one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one of my professors mixed that. No oh, way. Really? For the game? That's crazy. Yeah. I heard they more made more money off of that video game than their entire discography. Damn. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh if those are the artists that inspired you when you're younger and first starting to play or record music uh who's inspiring you now who keeps you 
who's who are you taking ideas from or just getting general inspiration from i think we're pretty consistently inspired by our peers that are in the scene around us and adjacent to us mm -hmm. there's a band clifford mm -hmm. clifford that, the band clifford the band yeah that has been monumental for me and i feel like everyone here yeah mm -hmm. um trophy wife is a big inspiration yeah and christian pace who's in trophy wife yeah yeah um of love is yeah. a big inspiration yeah um i really love um this i think it's just one a, a guy but uh midair thief is like one of my favorite artists and i think um artists like that and um like inspire me to make like a lot of like textures in our music i like wednesday a lot yes. um always always big thief big thief, big, big, big thief fans yeah. we also i feel like draw a lot of inspiration like when it comes to performing like live i feel like that's something that we've been thinking about like a lot more within this like past year but seeing our friends like in godcaster play live yeah just like how i don't know it feels like a very like cathartic experience it's like theatrical theatrical yeah very like yeah. theatrical but like still just like a genuine i don't know like you can tell that it feels it, they're just like doing it because it feels good um but like love the way that they perform live there's also yahweh nail gun is like so crazy that pawns we, pawns yeah yeah just like the list goes on yeah so yeah. Really, yeah on this list everybody everyone is good <laughs> Do you have anything from anything or anyone from outside of music that you think you regularly pull from when creating your own music? I think a lot of like visual art is very inspiring, um, like abstract visual art, like Hilma Hoff Clint for me. Um, just like that intersection of like spirituality not like religious like spirituality, but just like general like spirituality within art. It's like very inspiring um, when it comes to like pulling for like lyrics and things like that. Um, I've been reading a lot of, I just read like two Banana Yoshimoto books. He's this like Japanese author who does a lot of like, just like magical like realism kind of like theme stuff in her writing. I feel like that's very inspiring to me. I try to pull from stuff like that when writing lyrics as well. Um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of, of like ancient mythology and like Greek mythology and stuff uh, specifically. And um, I couldn't tell you in what way it inspires my guitar playing, but I know it does. <laughs> Um, makes you want to be a god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, I don't know something about reading uh, ancient uh, mythology and like these awesome like fantastical stories makes me want to like make um, very like yeah. it makes me want to make music a lot for some reason. I also think just friends personally. Like friends are very inspiring in general and in making music because they make you want to do things that you love because you love them. It's mm -hmm. a good answer. Do any of you have any creative pursuits outside of music? I like to. I feel like I'll like pick up something and then like do it a lot, and then I'll like forget that it's my hobby, and then I'll like come back to it later. But I do like. I was like soldering jewelry out of like shells and stuff for a while um and then more recently i was just like making these little like hair clips because i have this like bag of oyster shells in my room um and i was just like doing like super glue like super glue in the oyster shells to like hair clips and stuff and like decorating it with like beads um i also practice like some herbalism 
I make like a smoke blend that we sell as merch and I had made like this wish oil that's like for anointing candles a while ago. And stuff like that is what I get up to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll like design like stuff to do with like our merch most of the time. That's like what I'm like doing. Like I'll like make like the tour poster or like just like doodle some some shit and then like Photoshop it onto something that ends up being like for paper lady. I feel like it's nice to do stuff like that when it comes to just like merch and general like design stuff. It's nice to have like a through line. I don't know if I have any. I don't think I do have any creative pursuits outside of music, yeah, honestly. Not right now, at least. I'm yeah. writing a TV show with my friend. Oh, yeah. But that's it. Working on a pilot? Say, what did you say? Working on a pilot? Yeah, almost finished with the pilot. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Very Hmm? Of cooking. Cooking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Start a garden. Cook. Yeah, we love yeah. to cook. We really I love know. cooking. Don't always think of that as a creative pursuit. I feel like it's supposed it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you have a yeah. go to dish? Something you, you pull out to impress people? Awesome. Ali makes this awesome like kale pasta. Oh, I love the kale pasta. I love so making good. the kale pasta. I got um <laughs> <laughs> my I work at like a like an apothecary place um that's also like the pickup point for a farm share for like two different farm shares actually and like just like farms in massachusetts will like drop off like all of the stuff and then people that like pay to get like fresh vegetables and like bread and whatever will like come and pick it up um but they always give us an extra one so then we just get these like really nice like fresh farm vegetables and things and from the farm share this week there is like really beautiful like loaf of ciabatta so i've been making these sandwiches the last couple of days and like i've been like when i'm at work i'm like writing down like ideas for like sandwiches that i'm gonna make like sardine and like sprouts and radish and it's like come to the cheese that i have um like preserved lemon and stuff i really like making like chilies and soups um i think it's so fun yeah. to cook something yeah. for hours on end we have a ginger pumpkin soup recipe i have a ginger pumpkin soup yeah. recipe that's my dad that sounds good <laughs> that was like, delicious talked about making a paper lady like cookbook that was yeah. like an idea that my mom had she was like you guys should just like each contribute like a recipe and have it be like a little like zine like yeah. type thing where there's like a handful of recipes in it. that would be really get... sick i think that would be a fun little piece of merch yeah, yeah. i think that's something we'll try to get together mm. just as like a little thing to like hand out or like i don't yeah. know yeah. yeah i want to get into sourdough my sister's mm. like recently accumulated like a, a sizable like following online um for her <laughs> sourdough creation they're called awesome. loaf by yeah she'll like she, post like a picture of a uh, like like loaf of bread that she made and then put like a paper lady song over it yeah it's, she like, posts really us awesome. a lot which is cool and she does all these like cool like she'll straight up like draw on the bread like she made like a winnie the Pooh bread it's the so other day and stuff um so yeah, she's really um, awesome at that. She recently sent me some starter, and I, I fucked it up. But that is definitely a goal of mine, and maybe a future creative pursuit is uh, getting some bread making going. Nothing like a like a fresh loaf of bread. That's like it's the best smell in the world. There was actually like a a, a like some type of like study i read once where people it was like um the most favored scent in the world is fresh made bread it what? like makes our brains like feel the most good <laughs> yeah. it's the only the scent that good. picks you up by the nose and carries you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> someone's mm. always flying oh i've been drying out this like piece of a tree like on our front porch for like the last couple of weeks because there was this tree that like fell down in our yard um and then our management company came and like sawed it into like pieces to make it easier to move and then the pieces were like waiting outside of our house to be like picked up by the like, garbage people and then 
I like called Rowan when I got home and I was like, help me carry this like piece back up to the house because I want to turn it into like a table or something. It was like so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's been, I, it, I have to wait for it to dry out and then I have to get something sharp enough to like get the, um, the bark off of it and then I have to like sand it down and whatever. But I'm going to turn that into a table. Yeah. I'm just like waiting on it to not be like wet. Right a lot of pursuits going on, I guess. Yeah, that's our stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, before this interview, I asked friend of the show and friend of you guys, Tape Deck Tommy, if he has any, if he has any questions for you, and he asked, "Do you have any intentions of making two drummers the standard for live shows?" <laughs> 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 Uh, probably not. Yeah, yeah no. but maybe it will be a special treat. <laughs> yeah. That won't be the last time that it happens. I think yeah, that so after fun. we did it, we we're like, that was the best. Like, <laughs> so yeah. fun. For anyone sure. who wasn't there, we played a, a show, um, and uh, we were the last band of the night, and every other band had two drummers. Um, who else was on the lineup? So, was that Bricklayer yeah. and? And Pons and Minko. Uh, and Minko, and we were playing last. Minko doesn't usually have two drummers, but, but Pons and Bricklayer always do. So Pon or Bricklayer went first, and then Pons went, and then Minko went up, and they had two drummers, and we were just like, "Fuck!" Like we can't be we the can't, only like, ones. We can't headline tonight and not have like be the only band without two drummers. <laughs> we call so we called Brady. Yeah. Brady Dallas Jones. Uh, he's like our, he's our like sixth member. Um, when Will and Alex were away uh, studying in Spain, Brady was filling in for Alex on drums. And Christian Pace was filling in on bass. For Will, yeah. yeah. And then when they came back, um, Brady would kind of just like be an extra like sixth member. He plays like 12 string and stuff, but like because of that time when he was like playing drums for us, he knew all the songs. Um, and I think it was like the week before we had just played, or yeah, it was a week before we played Boston Calling and Brady was playing 12 string for that. And then just because it was like at O'Brien's, it's like, you can't always like fit six people on stage at O'Brien's or like sometimes six, six person band is like not the vibe at O'Brien's. So he wasn't there like to play guitar that night. And then when Minko went on and we saw that they had two drummers, I went outside with Alex and we called Brady and we were just like, you've got to get to O'Brien's now. Like... <laughs> And <laughs> he had just finished playing another gig and he was like on his way to go sleep. He was and then, at home in bed. Yeah, he was in bed and we were like, you got to play drums with us. And, so, yeah. and he, he came like, and, he, <laughs> and he smashed it. Honestly. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, yeah there were crazy. songs that he knew from playing guitar that he had never played on drums. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so crazy. He's, just, the new he's just like, I was thinking of my guitar parts. Yeah. <laughs> we killed it. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's crazy awesome. musician. He's so nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely want to do that again when it's appropriate yeah. i think that yeah we probably won't say when we'll do it it'll probably just be something just that's happen. gonna happen That is, that's a sick story, but that's also like a crazy lineup that night. Yeah. Yes. And so then well. every band's like pulling out two drummers. That's, I mean, I know Pons and Bricklayer always have the two drummers, it's, but those are some good bands and that's some like exciting I, gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right before the fun. set, I like went to the sound person and I was like, just so you know, like we have two drummers as well. And he looked so <laughs> defeated. <laughs> yeah, but he was actually so chill. Like, he, he handled it so though, well. Yeah. The, he was like rigging everything up. And I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like, about this. And he was like, I'm actually having fun. 
Uh, <laughs> but it was it was a really good fun energy in the room that night. It's like it was great. one of my favorite shows. Yeah, that we played. it sold out. Too. Yeah, it was like a wow. Sunday night, and it sold out. It was awesome. That's sick. Yeah, Austin calling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting uh, we're getting pretty late into the episode here. Uh, I like to ask every episode if you guys have anybody you want to shout out, anybody you'd like to thank, or anything you want to recommend or tell people to check out. Definitely all those bands we, we mentioned earlier, like Clifford and Trophy Wife, um, Christian Pace. Burning Knife. Brady, Brady Dallas Knife. Jones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout, um, shout out to Chicken the Cat for keeping us all sane. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Chicken the Cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the interview. And of course. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Shout out you. Shout out you. <laughs> thank you to everybody who has listened to our music. Yes. And made it through a whole song. Please, <laughs> please listen if you have. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to the listener listening right now. Thank you for keeping up with the Bughead podcast and checking out this interview. Be sure to keep an eye out for Paper Lady's new album. Do you have a name announced yet? Do you have a name for it? Uh, I don't know if we're saying it yet. Nothing official. Okay. Keep an eye out for the next Paper Lady album coming out. Do we have a, a ballpark estimate? No. Not yet. Coming out eventually. But keep an eye out for that. And go listen to the back catalog. It's all good. Uh, and, and once again, I said it already, but thank you for listening to another episode of the Bughead Podcast. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.